Welcome to the Winning Daily Podcast. We're here for March 2nd, March 3rd. A lot of stuff to go over. We're going to bring in our man, Dynamite David, early. We got a lot of college basketball tournaments kicking off in the next couple days. So we're going to bring in Dynamite David to go over some conference tournaments. And then we're going to get into our college basketball games for tonight. Make up game city week, we're calling this. So uh, we're ready to get into it. Dynamite, you ready to get into this conference tournaments? Yeah, March is here. I'm getting really excited. All right. Let's start at the top of the list. Uh, the American East uh, kicked off a couple days ago. We're down to our final four teams, and it's pretty much the final four teams that you would expect in the American East. Vermont is a 155 favorite. UMBC is a plus 100 favorite. Uh, Hartford, plus 1,000. And UMass, Lowell, plus 1,800. Uh, Vermont has dominated this conference uh, pretty much since the beginning of this conference. Uh, there's a little, a little life with UMBC, and uh, Binghamton had a nice scandal in the middle of the 2000s to break everything up, but it's been Vermont's conference pretty much forever. Do you see any way anybody else can take this conference at all? No, I, I really think you'd be wasting your money if you go with anybody besides Vermont uh, at the minus 155 here. I just I think there, it's a done deal. They're going to win it. Uh, and I don't, I don't think there's really enough enough value there to take a long shot with any of these other guys. Yeah. Uh, UMBC has been able to beat uh, Vermont. Now, uh, I, I don't know if they can do it like three times in a season. But, so. but you're only getting two to one odds taken. Yeah, that's them. the other thing. Uh, there's no value really in UMBC at uh, just an even. You'd be better off uh, taking them in their first game and their second game and trying to double it down. Uh the only value I might see is you might ride Vermont a little bit at minus 155 because uh, they're going to be heavily favored in their uh, first game before the finals. And uh, my guess is that second game versus UMBC probably will be higher than 155. So there might be a little value there. All right, let's move on to the Big South. And uh, speaking of teams who have dominated that conference, we have Winthrop, minus 400, Radford, plus 275, Campbell, plus 800, Longwood, plus 1300. Uh, Winthrop and Campbell have been uh, the conference teams that have won this time, this conference the most. Winthrop has been really good throughout the 2000s, and that continued this season. Uh, anywhere uh, upset here at all, or Winthrop, who has pretty much dominated uh, this whole season? Anybody I actually like them? I actually like the Camels here. The Campbell Camels uh, plus eight hundred. I think is pretty solid value for a, a. They've got a pretty solid team this year, sixteen and nine record, uh, and they they could pull off an upset and win this tournament. Yeah, I I, I don't know if I would favor them uh, to get through, uh, but uh, I, I think there is some value in Campbell here. Uh, Longwood I think has no chance at all. Uh, Radford I haven't really liked all year long. So uh, if you were taken. And a underdog. I do like the camels here. So uh, maybe a little wager on the Campbell camels here, but uh, Winthrop has been uh, very, very dominant where I couldn't even take them for the last uh, two months of the season. They've been getting the Gonzaga treatment and uh, throwing up 24 point spreads there. All right, moving on to the Missouri Valley. This one's pretty interesting. Uh, they might uh, probably get two in there because uh, I think Loyola Chicago probably will be an at-large team. Uh, they're ranked number 20 in the country. Um, Drake has played really well. Technically speaking, I don't know if they could get in at-large wise, but uh, record wise, uh, they're much better than uh, some of the teams that I think will uh, creep in there. So uh, you got Loyola Chicago at minus 400, Drake at plus 400, Missouri State at plus 700, Indiana State at plus 1,200, Bradley at plus 8,000, Northern Iowa at plus 10,000, Valpo at 10,000, Southern Illinois at 20,000, Evansville at 20,000, Illinois State at 20,000. Are we going to ride any of those 200 to one shots to uh, make a Cinderella run? Uh, I don't know about that. I might take Drake here at plus 400. I think uh, they they could do it. They haven't played a whole lot of competition this year, so I'm unsure how how they're going to go there. Uh, Loyola Chicago is heavy favorite again, and, and I'd have to pick them if I was uh, taking anybody. But I, I could put some money on Drake here. I could see them running through. Yeah, uh, there's a little bit of value, I think, in Drake here. Uh, they've split their uh, series, but that was one of those weird uh, – 
back-to-backs. Uh, the first game, Loyola-Chicago annihilated them, which sort of tells me that if they played and Loyola was uh, really putting on the gas pedal, they probably would annihilate them. And four to one, I- I'd probably want that a little more where uh, like Missouri State sits at six, seven to one to get real value because uh, – I, I don't think we're guaranteed Drake to the finals, and that would be what scares me. Uh, uh, this Indiana State team has been sort of hot and cold all season long. They, they've had the capabilities of beating teams like Drake and Illinois Chicago. So I'd look at them. Uh, Bradley actually uh, came into the year as co-favorites with Loyola Chicago. Um, that looks pretty uh, bad right now, especially with the way they ended the season. But uh, they've been – They might get plucky in this tournament. And uh, also, Northern Iowa was expected to finish in the top three as well. And they've been just terrible. Uh, I I don't know if I'd go with my uh, 100-to-1 shot on Northern Iowa. But that would be what would scare me off Drake is they run into one of these other teams that are, you know, medium quality and capable of beating them. So that plus 400 value, I, I just don't know if I'd quite take it. I'd maybe stare at Indiana State at 12 to 1 a little bit, but uh, the way uh, Loyola, Chicago, when they play hard, uh, very, very difficult to sort of uh, not take them. But uh, I do think it could be a two uh, conference league if Drake uh, can get to the finals. I think uh, Loyola, Chicago will get in at large. All right, let's move on to the Atlantic Sun. We got Liberty at minus 400, Bellamine plus 375, Litscombe at 12 to 1, Stinson at 22 to 1, Florida Gulf Coast at uh, 30 to 1, North Florida at 33 to 1, North Alabama at 66 to 1, and Kennesaw State at plus 150 to 1. All right, how are you on your Atlantic Sun other than Liberty? This is another one that I'm just not going to reach on. I've got a few that I like some dogs here, but I just, I don't see anyone stopping Liberty here. And I just, I don't, I don't, maybe Lipscomb at plus 1200, but I just, I don't think anyone's really got a shot at taking down Liberty in this tournament. Yeah, I, I, I liked Lipscomb, Lipscomb uh, towards the end, and then they had a terrible game over the weekend, which uh, sort of scared me off. Uh, I, I watched the Liberty Bellamine game over the weekend. Uh, it wasn't all that pretty Liberty. Uh, just, really is a class above all these teams uh, funding wise. And uh, so they're just much, much better. I I don't think there's really any value you could take here uh, other than uh, Liberty at all. You might want to ride Liberty at the four to one, because I think you're at least guaranteed a uh, conference final here for sure. All right, let's move on to the Sun Belt. Uh, This one is- This one's got me excited. Yes, I know. It has me excited because I had a couple in here that I think could make a run here. Everyone is pretty, pretty tight. Uh, Georgia State at 2.15 to 1. Coastal Carolina at 2.75 to 1. Texas State at 4 to 1. Louisiana Lafayette at 6.5 to 1. South Alabama, 14 to 1. Appy State, 20 to 1. Arkansas Little Rock, 20 to 1. UT Arlington, 25 to 1. Arkansas State- 30 to 1, Georgia Southern, 33 to 1, Law Monroe, 66 to 1, and Troy at 80 to 1. All right, Sunbelt. I'm excited about this one because I think there are a couple that could make a run here. Where are you going? I, I think this is going to be a really good tournament because there's a lot of teams here that could pull this one off. Uh, my favorite is actually Texas State at plus 400. Uh, I'm, I would put money on them. Uh, but I also really like Arkansas State at plus 3,030 to 1 odds. I think that's really good. Uh, and they've been playing well uh, later in the year than they were earlier in the season. But there's just – really, you could you could just roll the dice with any of these teams and you'd have a solid shot at, at them running the, running the tournament. Yeah, the only one I don't think I would take was Georgia State at uh, plus 215 to 1. I just don't think there's any value in the favorite there because uh, Coastal Carolina is a very solid team. I don't think I'd ride them. I know you like Texas State, so that's – that's I mean, they've yep. played really solid all year. Um, Louisiana Lafayette, I like at plus 650. They've been a really solid team. And, uh, you know, long shot-wise, uh, they haven't had a great year, but Arkansas Little Rock has dominated this uh, conference for years and years. So uh, y- you might be have to put a stake in their heart before I say they aren't going to make a run to the conference finals here. So uh, uh, just a really, really interesting tournament. I, none of us are giving Georgia State any love, though. They've been pretty solid all year long. But uh, 
though I think they probably are the best team, the value there at 2.15 to 1 to get through this tournament unscathed, I just don't think there's really, really any value there. All right, uh, we're moving to the Colonial. Now, uh, this one should be interesting if it actually gets played because uh, last I read, like, Two-thirds of these teams are on COVID list and haven't been able to play. So uh, how this one gets through, I don't know, but we'll try to handicap it anyway. Uh, James Madison plus 250, Drexel at 300, Northeastern at 350, Hofstra at 350, Delaware at plus 1,000, uh, CFC at plus 1,600, NC Wilmington at plus 3,000, Elon at plus 3,000, Townsend at 66 to 1, and William Mary at 100 to 1. Where are you going with the Colonial? We haven't had much Colonial action for the last month, so uh, yeah. try I haven't really this one. I haven't really uh, followed a whole lot of this conference this year, uh, but I, I think if I had to pick one of these teams, I really like Northeastern. Uh, they're probably my favorite. Yeah, we're on the same wavelength here. Uh, a lot of them have been in COVID protocol, so they haven't even been playing for the last uh, handful of weeks. Uh, but uh, the Northeastern at plus uh, 350 was staring at me uh, – they, they really started to play really well towards the end of the season. I just don't think James Madison is very good. And I don't think they'll win it. Uh, Drexel at plus 300, really pretty good value. Hofstra has been solid uh, at home. So plus 350 there is pretty good. And even Delaware has been a little spunky at times. So uh, at plus 1,000, I, I don't know if I'd put money on it, but uh, there might be a little bit of perceived value there. But uh you and me both really like uh, Northeastern here and think they'll make the run on it. All right, let's go to the horizon. Uh, this one's been a pretty fun conference. I've been betting on this one uh, most of the year. We're going to go with Cleveland State at 6-1, to one, Detroit at 5-1, to one, Northern Kentucky at 10-1, to one, Oakland at 11-1, to one, Wisconsin, Milwaukee, 25 to one Wright state who uh, started out gangbusters, but is sort of faded a little bit towards the end of the year is the favorite at minus two fifty. Youngstown state at plus 2000 and your favorite IUPUI Fort Wayne at uh, five fifty two one. So uh, where are you going in the horizon here? Uh, this is yet another one. I've got to roll with the favorite. I, I don't see too many upsets here. Although uh, the only other team really popping out at me is Cleveland state. Uh, but I just I don't see anyone taking down Wright State. Yeah, uh, if Wright State can find their mojo, uh, I think they sort of uh, they had this uh, conference uh, locked up like uh, a month and a half ago. So I don't know if these uh, games towards the end are indicative of how they've been playing. Uh, a couple teams I was looking at here: uh, Detroit at five to one has been really good the last uh, month or so. Uh, Northern Kentucky has always been a little spunky here. Uh, they've had a bit of a down year, so uh, I'd look at that. And uh, Cleveland State, uh, not spectacular, but have been solid all year long. So uh, I think those three there, uh, I don't think anybody else has a prayer. Uh, Oakland, West Mill, uh, Youngstown State, Uwe Pui, Fort Wayne. Uh, but uh, I think uh, Cleveland State, Detroit, Northern Kentucky, one of those might could pop up. But uh, if Wright State finds their form, they're definitely the class of the horizon. All right, let's move to the summit. Uh, this one's one of my favorite conferences. Uh, I love South Dakota State, plus 130. North Dakota State, uh, two, plus 275. Oral Roberts, plus 350. South Dakota, plus 500. UMKC, 14 to 1. North Dakota, 50 to 1. Western Illinois, 60 to 1. And Omaha, 80 to 1. Uh, South Dakota State has dominated this conference for years now. Uh, North Dakota State is a little plucky this year. Uh, where are you ri riding in the summit? I'm going to go with Oral Roberts. Oh. Uh, getting a little bit of value, and, and it's just something different, honestly. Yeah. But, uh, you know, South Dakota State's the favorite here, but I just don't think you're getting much there uh, with them being the favorites. Yeah. Uh, Oral Roberts was the dominant team in the summit uh, before South Dakota State uh, got in here. And uh, there's two things that uh, always uh, help South Dakota State. They have the biggest stadium, uh, so the conference tournament is always held in South Dakota State's home stadium. And uh, they're usually the best team. So it, it would essentially be like if uh, the SEC tournament was held in Rupp Arena every year. Uh, not only do you have the quote unquote best team in the conference not technically this year but they also get their home field advantage by playing in their home stadium uh, I do like your or Roberts pick uh, they've been really solid down the stretch uh, North Dakota State has played really well uh, late this year so I think they could 
uh, probably give a little bit of a run, but uh, South Dakota State always is the class here, and uh, it's always really, really shocking if they don't win it. All right, we're going to go to the big one this week, the Atlantic 10. I, I This one was a tough one for me to handicap because uh, – Really, these top four teams, I think, are really, really close in how they are. And uh, honestly, I think you could probably drop down all the way to Rhode Island here and uh, give somebody a chance to make a run here. But uh, VCU at plus 225, St. Louis at plus 250, uh, the Bonnie St. Bonaventure at plus 350, Richmond at plus 375, Davidson at plus 850. Uh, Dayton is 12 to 1. Rhode Island 28 to 1. UMass 35 to 1. The Dukes of Duquesne at 100 to 1. George Mason at 100 to 1. George Washington, our friend's favorite team on the year, at 300 to 1. Fordham at 400 to 1. LaSalle at 500 to 1. St. Joseph's at 500 to 1. What are you thinking here in the A10? Well, before I go with my favorite, I'm going to throw out a team that I think may be worth uh, taking a long, long, long shot with at uh, St. Joseph's. Uh, they've only won four games this uh, year, but guess what? Three of them have been the last three games. They don't get to bring uh, Jameer Nelson and uh, Delonte West back to play. I'm sorry. Hey, they've won three of their four total games the last three weeks. They're on a three-game winning streak, including wins over Richmond and Dayton. So I think with the odds they're getting, hey, you know, it's worth a shot. They could be the hot team going into their conference tournament. Well, you write them. You write that 500 to 1, and then you write them every game through the tournament. Uh, I think you could probably fund your tournament madness all through that <laughs> if that one is. Uh, uh, but uh, my favorite, I've got to go with the Bonnies, St. Bonaventure. I think they're uh, playing the best basketball right now out of these top four or five teams. And I just I, I like them to, to take care of business. Yeah, uh, like I said, I, I can see really any of the top four teams uh, making a run here. And uh, you could convince me of an offensive team like Davidson or Dayton, who, you know, has been hot and cold. And even Rhode Island, who's been, you know, uh, plucky at times, could make a run here. Uh, I do like your St. Bonaventure's pick. I've been riding the Bonnies pretty much all season long. I, I think they're sort of the sneaky good team that uh, no one knows is actually quite good, probably because their nickname is the Bonnies or something, and it's just hard to fathom that they're really good at basketball. But uh, I, I stared at the St. Louis at plus 250 a little bit here. Uh, they've struggled since they got back from COVID. If we could bring that team back from uh, December that was cruising along and hammering everybody, I'd like that. Uh, VCU is just a solid team. I, I know why they're the favorite. Uh, Richmond at plus 375, technically speaking, was a huge favorite to win this conference at the start of the year. And uh, after getting off to a hot start, they've been really sort of hot and cold. Um, and Dayton uh, plays a really weird style of play that might be conducive to the tournament form. So uh, at 12 to 1 for them, I, I just think this uh, tournament should be interesting. Well, the thing that makes this interesting is a lot of these top teams, you know, you've seen them win some solid wins here down the stretch. And you've also seen them lose some very strange games that they shouldn't be losing. So it's it's really hard to see who yeah. the, the clear Your standout. St. Joseph's. Yeah, <laughs> losing to St. <laughs> Joseph's as, as an example. All right. So uh, no love for our friend in the gas station at uh, George Washington 300 to 1. No, no. <laughs> no love for George Washington. I, I think uh, – I'd be St. Louis and St. Bonaventures would probably be the two I'd ride with maybe uh, trying to ride Richmond in every game through. I probably wouldn't take the 3.75, but I might take them in each individual game uh, throughout the tournament to see if they can get hot and make a run. All right, so those are our conference tournaments so far this week. There are a couple more uh, as the lines come out we'll uh, get to during the week. Uh, we'll see if you can uh, pick a West Coast conference winner that doesn't have a G in its name. <laughs> okay, so let's get to the games today, Dynamite. Uh, you have a much bigger slate than I do. I was a little light. I couldn't find much, and I didn't know quite how to read a lot of these makeup games. I, I don't know how serious teams are going to take them or how I, – I guess teams that need to get wins probably will take them a little more seriously than the ones that don't. 
Yeah, there's there's actually some really good games tonight. I was pretty surprised. Uh, I'm going to start with the the probably the biggest game of the night, the Big Ten matchup between Michigan and Illinois. Uh, now it's been, I guess it's kind of dropped the last few hours that it looks like uh, Dosimu is going to play. He's being fitted for a mask. Uh, don't know how that's going to affect his game. And he's still questionable. Uh, but since that it was announced, it's moved two points. And I'm going to take Michigan minus six and a half. Uh, this Michigan team wins at home by an average of 17 and a half points per game. Uh, Illinois, you know, they – They've looked solid, just got a good win without their best player uh, against Wisconsin. Uh, I don't know if he's going to be 100% tonight, and they're just going into who I think is the, the best team in college basketball right now uh, other than Gonzaga, but they haven't really played anybody. So, the But this Michigan team has really been looking good, and I think they win by double digits, so I like that six and a half here. You know, for somebody who teases me when I wear my Michigan shirt, you've, you've been riding Michigan a lot this season. I've been riding the Big Ten a lot this year. Uh, I'm still waiting on that stat on when, how many, uh, what percentage of my picks this year have been in the Big Ten. But I've really liked the Big Ten basketball action. Yes, definitely. You considering have. two of my next four are also in the Big Ten. <laughs> <laughs> but next up, we're going to go to a team that I think has a lot to play for in this game, and that's going to be the reason they're going to win big. Uh, they just got a good win against Creighton, but I like Xavier minus one and a half at Georgetown tonight. I think they're the better team. And they're sitting right on the bubble. I think that Creighton win might put them in, but they're going to need every W they can get. So I think they're going to come out and dominate Georgetown tonight. Yeah. Uh, I, I was very close, like this close to putting Xavier down. And uh, I just talked myself out of it. I was like, yeah, this will be where they – some weird Georgetown uh, spunky game that I'm going to be mad at. But uh, – Maybe as time grows, I might go back and uh, hop on that one because I was very, very close to taking Xavier. Uh, it, it's around that time when they like to make their little late season push and uh, scare everybody in the uh, conference tournament and the NCAA tournament. Yeah, they're they're playing well well right now, and like I said, they've got everything to play for. And I think that motivation is gonna is really gonna. Uh, this is probably one of my my locks tonight. I I really like this one. Yeah. Uh, next up. And the back to the Big Ten in Michigan State versus Indiana. I'm going to go with the Spartans here, minus two and a half. Um, these two teams uh, are kind of trending in different directions right now. Michigan State's won three of their last four, including wins against Illinois, Ohio State, and this Indiana team. Um, Indiana, they've lost four out of their last five. So I think this, uh, the fact that it's uh, at Michigan State – and it being a small point spread at just two and a half, I'm going to go with the Spartans. Mm, hopping on the Sparty bandwagon. It, it took you a couple win, but uh, now you're on the train. Uh, and, and it's almost not so much the Spartans here is as bad as Indiana's well, been Well, I was playing. going to say, uh, I think you hopped off the Hoosier bandwagon about six weeks ago because I, I think you've taken against them every week. Yeah, they, they, they started off the year really strong, and they've just been really falling back. Uh, I don't even think they're middle of the pack in the Big Ten anymore. No, they're towards I, the bottom of the pack. They're really poor right now. Uh, after Michigan State beat them, uh, I guess – a week and a half ago, yes, uh, Michigan State jumped them and has been trending the other direction while Indiana is trending down. So we're going to stay in the Big Ten for another another pick. I like – this is another one of my locks today. I love Purdue minus two and a half at home versus Wisconsin tonight. I just – simply for the fact that I really like Purdue at home. I think they've only got one conference loss at home this season, and this Wisconsin team really struggles to score the basketball. Really good defensively, but they uh, they can't find an answer offensively. So I'm going to go with Purdue here, minus two and a half. Mm. Last up, I like Georgia Tech, minus one and a half versus Duke. Uh, this Georgia Tech team's won four straight, including a win against Virginia Tech, which I believe I picked correctly over you picking Virginia Tech that in that correct. one. correct. Uh, but I've been on the Georgia Tech train ever since then. And technically speaking, I was on the Georgia Tech train on that one. Uh, I just listened to math, and uh, math let me down in that day. Uh, the other thing I look at here is uh, Duke is really susceptible to teams uh, that shoot the ball well. They're giving up a uh, poor field goal percentage, allowing 46% per game. And Georgia Tech shoots the ball well. They're shooting 47.3%. So I think this play, this matchup plays into their favor, and it's at Georgia Tech. So I think they're going to go into this offseason strong. Yeah. Uh, that would be my college basketball game of the day. Back-to-back uh, -back days, only one game for me. Uh, I, I think we'll warm back up as these uh, tournaments start to heat back up. But uh, – 
like I said, I didn't really know how to play some of these makeup games and how everybody's motivated. Uh, I did like that Xavier one, but uh, just couldn't make myself quite grab it. But I'm riding Georgia Tech, too. They've been hot, uh, possibly the best team in the ACC the last uh, two and a half, three weeks. So uh, so I'm going to ride Georgia Tech. I think they'll uh, beat up on Duke. So I got Georgia Tech as well tonight, minus the one and a half. All right, that's our show. Be sure to follow us on greenlightnetwork.org, Greenlight Network on Facebook and YouTube. Where can we find you, Dynamite? You can follow me on Twitter at GLN Dynamite underscore D. All right, I'm GLN Champ 5 on Twitter and Instagram. That's our show, and I'm out. <laughs>